Today, we're talking about this little unique device that you kind of see in the background here. It's called the Zeppin Pons PT, pan and tilt head for their Micro 2 motorized slider. This is quite the equipment, so let's dive deep into it. But first off, I want you to tell me if you hear any noise in the background when I stop talking. You hear a little bit of hum? All right, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But for those of you who don't know what a motorized slider is, well, I think it's pretty obvious, right? It's a slider with a motor that slides back and forth or side to side. I actually reviewed the Micro 2 slider a while ago. You can check out that review video right here. And actually the creator of Zeppin is the former vice president of Ziyun. Uh, which is a manufacturer of gimbals. I actually personally know him. His name is Leo, great guy. Uh, so he created this company called Zeppin, and this is all about motion control systems. So they released the Micro 2 a few years ago, and now they finally released a motorized pan and tilt head to go along with this motorized slider. And this is something I've been wanting for such a long time. So the Zeppin Pons PT is a full modular system, meaning that each piece can work on its own, and it's basically a plug and play system. So you have the Micro 2 slider, you have the pan module, and then you have the tilt module. Each module has its own set of control buttons and power buttons, along with their own power source coming from a Sony MPF style battery. So basically you don't have to buy the whole set, okay? You can buy each module on its own. And what's really great is that we have buttons on each module, so you don't have to use the app to program this thing. And another thing that I had complaints about with previous companies that I uh, was a part of in reviewing you know, their equipment uh, was that if you close the app, will the slider still remember the commands that you programmed it with? And this one does. So I can program the keyframes, you know, the A, B, C, D point, and then I can just turn off my phone and all the commands will be saved in the modules so that way it will keep repeating those moves. So if you're shooting something like, let's say an interview, I mean a slider is perfect for those types of shots. So you keep it dynamic, you keep it moving. And in a moment, I'm gonna demo that with you in this video so we can check out you know, the noise levels, the overall accuracy. And I know some of you are gonna probably say, oh yeah, you can do this with a gimbal. No, you cannot. Gimbals are meant for, you know, high paced tracking shots. They're meant for walking shots. These types of sliders and motorized pan and tilt heads are meant for much more accurate shots. So you can pull off a lot cooler effects, especially when it comes down to cloning. And if you're interested in how to do those types of things, let me know in the comment section below and we'll talk more about it. Now, before we talk more about the test shots and overall features, let me first talk to you about the build quality. Now the build quality is phenomenal. I have no complaints regarding the build quality. Nothing about the system feels cheap. It has a metal construction, the Micro 2 slider, all metal, beautifully designed, extremely smooth, and uh, the pan and tilt pawns head, I really do like it. A lot of metal here, very, you know, there's no, there's no cheapness in this product. Now this product is not free of faults. We're gonna talk about the issues that I've had with the system in just a little bit. It has a lot to do with the app that you control the system with. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But overall, the features. So this thing can be controlled via the buttons on each individual module, or you can use the app for all the modules to work together seamlessly. And as I mentioned, this is a plug and play system. So if you wanna shoot like, let's say turntable product shots, you can take off the pan motor, put it on a table, put like, let's say a coffee mug on it and have it rotate so you can get those cool product shots. I even showcased it on my Instagram. You can see that footage right now, but it works very well. Each individual module works very, very well. Now, when it comes down to the overall app, I mean, it's a very simple app that lacks a ton of features. I've been talking back and forth between Zeppin's uh, engineering team and they said they're gonna add more features down the road. Uh, for example, I wanna see manual dampening controls. I wanna see smooth start and stop features. I kind of miss that from the Synetics uh, slider that I previously owned. I mean, we had a lot of features when it came down to dampening and ramp up speeds. 
Also, I did notice that the app is missing saved presets. I mean, this is something that I desperately need. For example, if I'm shooting a YouTube video constantly with the same setup, I wanna be able to just do a preset and have it go back and forth without me having to reprogram the keyframes and A and B points every single time. So that's really, really annoying. Uh, another thing with the app, it's not that stable. I've had it crash multiple times. Uh, Zeppelin is aware of this and they're gonna continue making upgrades to the application, but just so you know, if you do opt in and getting the system, you're gonna face some difficulties with the app, but overall you will eventually get it to program properly, so don't worry about that. So here's the overall interface of the application. You know, we have our waypoints. I'm gonna actually reset them. Uh, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. You know, you have a ton of different waypoints here that you can set. Uh, so first, you want to go to your A point. So we're going to start pro. So we're going to start programming the slider to go all the way to the left. You know, you can set your, you know, uh, tilt pan however you want. Uh, one of the things I did have an issue with is the speed. You notice that it's not really speed dependent on how far you move this digital joystick. And that can get very annoying. Like, I don't know what it's kind of doing right now. So sometimes it speeds up, sometimes it doesn't. It's a little bit buggy. But let's say you're happy with that position. We're going to hit the A button. That's going to be our first waypoint keyframe, however you want to call it. Then we're going to move to the other side. Okay. Wait for it to do that. Cool. We're going to set another position. Fantastic. Set the B keyframe. We're going to move to a, another position here. Cool. I see it just, it doesn't. There we go. Okay. There you go. Uh, right there. We're gonna set the C point. One of the other things that I have an issue with this app is, is that uh, you can't set different speeds for the different keyframes, okay? I want Zeppin to really make this thing much more fine tuned. This app is missing a ton of features. It just gives you the basics. So this is in video mode. You know, we have time-lapse mode. Uh, you can hook up a time-lapse. Uh, cable to your camera and it'll automatically make time lapses. I didn't test this feature yet because I'm not a time lapser. I mainly wanted a slider like this to shoot cool videos. Uh, and then we have, uh, you know, the auto round option, which will automatically cycle the movements back and forth. So that's cool. And we have the total speed. So you can uh, go down to 25% speed, 23% doesn't really matter. I found that the best performance out of this slider is at around 40%. This is when the motors are very quiet and you still get nice movement from the camera. All right guys, so here we are. I have the camera mounted on the slider, which is why the frame has changed so drastically, right? We got uh, the app loaded on the phone. So I'm gonna start by making the keyframes and then we're gonna look at the footage and see if it jerks or jumps. So, uh, I'm looking at my monitor here. Let's frame up. All right, we'll just start with this shot. Then we're gonna move the slider over. It's dragging on my softbox. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm gonna pan. And because of the weight of this system, guys, it's actually making my tripod droop. So I need to tighten it up even more. So this is something that's, you know, gonna happen, guys. So just take that into consideration. All right, I'm acting like such an amateur today. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, so here we go. All right, so that's our second keyframe. I'm gonna put the speed up to 40%. And then I want you guys to actually try and see if you can hear the motors. I'm gonna push my softbox back some more so it doesn't run into anything. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see how it works. Okay, uh, on a slider, I want you to check for jerky movements. I did notice on the pan axis, this has a little bit of jerk to it which is why I want them to create a dedicated setting for ramp up speed. Now I'm gonna stop talking and I want you to see if you can hear any motor noise.
So right now the microphone is about a foot and a half away from the setup, and that's honestly as close as I'm ever gonna have it to a microphone, and I can't really hear it. But you can see the cool effect that a slider does. A lot of racers today. <laughs> you can see the cool effect that the slider does. Uh, it creates that really neat parallax effect. So this is something that a lot of people would love to see in interview videos. And uh, that's the type of footage that I shot with my Synetics motorized slider too. So if you like this look, then definitely consider getting a slider pan and tilt head system like this. Uh, the overall setup time was very quick, especially since Zeppelin has its own quick release latch. It uses an Arca Swiss plate on the tilt motor or tilt axis. I do want them to increase the length of the mounting arm for the tilt axis because uh, it's just my, my Sony a7S III with a Sigma 24 to 70 seems to be too heavy for the motor. And with a longer arm, I'm able to balance it so that the motor is less stressed. So that's also something they have to consider, but I feel like they're gonna do that new change. But right now it's working fine. Uh, I just slightly adjusted my camera and it seems to be working fine with the tilt motor. But please let me know if you see any jerkiness. Uh, I don't think you heard any of the motor sounds, which is a great start. Uh, but yeah, I can already see in the monitor there's a little bit of jerkiness. So that's something that Zeppelin does need to work on. But overall, I do think it's one of the better performing setups that I've used when it comes down to a motorized pan and tilt head and a slider. Now let's talk about weight. I'll be honest with you guys, this system is pretty damn heavy, okay? And with that much weight, there comes a lot of responsibility. And that responsibility goes to your tripod. So you can't use cheap tripods here. I have this iFootage Gazelle tripod, highly recommend it, I'll link it down below. This thing will support this amount of weight, but if you're using cheaper like $100 tripods, I guarantee you, your tilt head will break, it will snap, and then your whole entire system will just fall over, okay? This is not a lightweight system, so you need to have a heavy duty tripod here. Now because of the slider's design, it's not a fixed slider, it constantly moves on its own track, so you can't really attach any support rods to it. So a lot of the pressure is going to the tilt head of your tripod. So your tilt head and the legs of your tripod have to be extremely strong. And good tripods, are not that cheap guys. So make sure that when you invest in a slider pan and tilt head system like this one here, you invest in a good tripod too. Something that I wish that Zeppelin threw in with this kit was a case. Uh, I hope they make a case for this unit down the road, but right now you just get a cardboard box uh, that they ship this unit in. And um, I don't want this thing banging around in my car or being loosely fitted in my camera backpack. So hopefully Zeppelin will come out with a case. Overall guys, I do love this slider. I think it does a great job, but there is a lot more left to be desired within the app specifically. I think they executed the hardware phenomenally. I think it did a very good job in its overall performance, but the app needs a lot of work. You can set your regular keyframes, uh, but is the app really that dependable? it's questionable. You might have to restart it, re-download it a few times, but once you program it, you can literally set your phone aside and let the slider do its thing. So it's the slider itself is very reliable, and we also get battery life readings on all three of the axes, you know, the slide, pan, and tilt, so you constantly know where your battery is at, which is great. And overall, guys, uh, I do recommend it, but just note, of you know the app issues okay uh, i'll link it down below let me know what you guys think also there is a discount code so if you buy it now you're gonna save some money here before prices go back up so use my discount code everything is linked down below in the description box along with the coupon code so get on the deal and uh yeah i'll see you guys in another video thank you so much for watching peace